All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Breakneck by Mark Cameron. This is book number four in his Arliss Cutter Alaskan Mystery Series. No, book number five. I take it back. Book number five. We'll edit the four part out. It's actually book number five. I've got book number one, Open Carry, right here. Book number two, Stone Cross. Three, Bone Rattle. Cold Snap is four. This one is five, Breakneck. I have reviewed all of these books on my channel. So if you want to um, watch the reviews, just, you know, type in Open Carry my last name into your search bar on YouTube and the review will magically show up on your screen. That's how the internet works. Anyway, let's talk about Breakneck, book number five. So, takes place in Alaska. I grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska. Any books about Alaska, I automatically, I'm pretty much going to like them. And I've loved this series so far. It's one of my favorite mystery series. Let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. So, so far, all of these books in the series have great covers that all have a similar theme, as you can tell. So, so far the publishing house has been doing a good job with the art, art design. And um, so pleased with that. Now this cover specifically is nice. It's got this, um, it's got these whale bones coming up. Now I noticed that this was similar to another Alaskan mystery novel I had, which was Tundra Kill by Stan Jones. Got the same whale bones going up. And then I was like curious, I was like, okay, what does this all mean? And uh, what is it with the, because uh, this is a typical kind of a thing up in Alaska, especially in some of those native Alaskan villages. So I was wondering if it was going to be mentioned in the book, and it was not really that much until I got to the very last page. And on the very last page, we find out the mystery of what this actually means. These, well, that's backwards. We'll edit this out too. I will turn it over. There we go. So what this actually means, these whale bones sticking up out the ground like that. So this is what it means. Um, so the book cover art depicts the massive bones from a bowhead whale that actually exists in the Utgayakvik. I guess the Utgayakvik is a portion of Alaska or maybe Russia, Siberia. I think it's Alaska. Um, so it exists. So these massive whale bones from the bonehead whale. No, the bowhead, not the bonehead whale. Oh man, this. I'm just gonna have to refilm all of this. Okay. The bowhead whale, the massive whale bones, actually exists in the Utkayavik to welcome folks to town. The remote wilderness of this town, with its whale carcass and wandering polar bears, highlights the danger that can exist when nature collides with people and civilization. So, it just represents the danger of civilization and the wilderness. And in Alaska, the wilderness is very, very dangerous. And that's one of the reasons I like these books is because Mark Cameron, also an Alaskan native, he puts the Alaskan wilderness in the state of Alaska as actually a character in the story. I mean, you can't escape it. If you've ever been to Alaska or lived there for even a half a minute, you know that Alaska is larger than life and everything up there is larger than life and everything up there will kill you very quickly. And um, it's a dangerous, but adventurous, but very elegantly beautiful, and majestically, stunningly, breathtakingly, landscape, all of that stuff. Okay, about the book itself. A girl, so in the prologue, a girl goes missing, and we start right off the bat with Man Against Nature. A girl goes missing along the banks of a violent Alaskan river. So... These people are out and there's the floodwaters are kind of washing away. And if I've been in Alaska during the springtime when those rivers are raging and they are violent, 
They are, and it might, it might it might not even look like a violent river, but you don't want to go near it. I mean, some of them actually look violent, and you're just like they're scary. And then others of them, they just look like normal rivers, but you don't want to approach them because they will suck you down and take you away. They will reach up and scrape you off of the uh, shoreline. It's just weird. That's what happens. And I'm glad that Mark Cameron uh, started out that way because he understands the nature of these, of the landscape. And um, so then you're like, okay, this girl's gone missing. She's fallen into the river. Or has she? Okay, then in the same prologue, we get to go to Russia, and there's some Russian gangsters, you know, plotting run Russian gangsta stuff. And then we jump to uh, Washington, D.C., where we get one of the Supreme Court justices is preparing a trip to Alaska. That is the prologue. And then we jump in. That's, so that's the setup of all the different mysteries that are going to sort of intertangle and interweave into this book. So then we jump to Arliss Cutter and his deputy, Lola Tariki, and they are um, U.S. Marshals stationed in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. And so now that some things are coming up that are going to, you know, they're going to have to investigate some things. They're going to have to get themselves into some danger based off of the three setups that I just told you about in the prologue. Now, a uh, um, Arliss himself, um, he's a veteran cop. Lola Tariq is, she's not a rookie anymore. She was kind of a rookie in the first books. But now she's kind of a seasoned veteran of five, six, seven years on the job. She's, um, so these two kind of have paired up and, uh, the older, the older mentor with the younger kind of rookie and, um, Arliss has these flashbacks. So there are some flashback scenes in this story where he flashes back to when he was a young boy with his brother. They had kind of, there's a love triangle involved with him, brother, his brother and a girl and which, which one was the girl going to choose? Uh, I won't give any of that away, but it's kind of interesting to see how those relationships have transferred from the youth into adulthood and what, um, impact those have on the story. Uh, the, um, Russians, let's talk about the Russians. So the Russians, there's a crew, a crew of a crab boat is murdered and the boat is scuttled. They sink the boat. But it's found, and, and, uh, and then so we've got a murder scene with this sunken crab boat. But the Russians did it. Okay, so the Russians are up to no good. But what? I won't say, because I don't want to spoil the plot. At the same time, a Supreme Court, ju Supreme Court Justice, Morehouse is her name, and she is coming to Alaska to attend a conference in Fairbanks. And this is where the book grew a lot more interesting for me, because so far, these Alaskan mysteries, uh, I think book four took place a little bit in Fairbanks, but the others haven't. But this one takes place in Fairbanks, not a whole lot, but at least about a quarter of the book takes place in Fairbanks. And those are the chapters I was paying particular attention to because I know the landscape of Fairbanks. I know the streets. I knew all the buildings he was talking about. I know where the airport is and all the hotels around the airport and, and the streets are along the Chena River. I know all of that. So whenever Mark Cameron was mentioning these things, I was like, oh yeah, I know exactly what we're talking about. <clears throat> and anyway... Things are going wrong at this conference that the Supreme Court Justice is. She's got her daughter. They decide to take a sightseeing trip on the, uh, it's called the um, Alaskan, uh, the uh, Alaskan Discovery Train. I think, I can't remember what it was actually called. Anyway, but it, it's, uh, you know, you get on the train and you discover Alaska and the glaciers and the mountains and things. So they take this trip. Um, We've still got the girl, the mystery of the girl that fell into the river early on. We've got, now we've got this Supreme Court Justice on this train taking a sightseeing trip through um, Alaska. We've got um, Russian mobsters doing Russia, Russian gangster stuff, but it's all tied into all of this. And then we've got this climax on a train and in the wilderness that is just explosive and cool and... Uh, that's, I mean, I don't want to give away the ending at all, and uh, none of, nothing I said is a spoilery. Um, let's just know that this is, again, a police procedural that takes place in Alaska, incorporates Russian gangsters, Supreme Court justices, missing girls, murder on a crab ship, Alaskan wilderness doing Alaskan wilderness things, which is always dangerous, and a high-speed chain train chase. I was going to say chain trace, but that wouldn't make sense. High speed chain. I just did it again. High speed, but let's just say 
There's a train in this book. Okay, so Mark Cameron, book number five in the Arliss Cutter Alaskan, Mis Alaskan Mystery Series. I give it, um, uh, you know, 10 out of 10. I've given all these books 10 out of 10. They're just really good. One of my favorite new series of all time. And, um, you know, that's uh, the uh, review for that.